Hey everybody, Chris Schaefer of Potsky Outdoors. We're back in one of our favorite places. We're in Valdez, Alaska. We promised ourselves we're never gonna come back here. We've already done so well that we don't need to come back. But you know what? The halibut of Valdez lured us in. Come out here today, we're gonna go through the Valdez arm, out into Prince William Sound, and we're gonna fish where Prince William Sound meets the Gulf of Alaska. That general area is one of the best places to halibut fish in all of Alaska. We're gonna team up with Valdez Outfitters. We're gonna put some halibut and rockfish nectar soak herring on jigs and see if we can get some halibut to bite. Remember, we're not on a charter today. We're out fun fishing with some of our buddies. So we're able to get out there, loosen up a little bit, and catch big halibut. Let's see how we do. Halibut setups when we're fishing bait, we're using Dakota 800 with 150 pound Power Pro on it. We use a depth hunter so we know how deep we're going. It's a pretty cool line. We use Therese rods. They're pretty heavy, but they're not too bad. They got a really nice action to them. It takes the two pound weights that we're using to get down to the bottom. We still have a lot of fun fighting the fish. We use some lighter jigging rods when we go to jigging, but these are some great bait rods. Get them in the rod holder, get some scent down there, and catch some big ones. Oh. We use a pretty basic rig for our bait fishing of our halibut. We use a little squid on there and 16 knot hook and a two pound weight. And we have our herring soaked overnight and Posky halibut nectar and rockfish. And we just take a take our circle hook right behind and do a double hook come through and then back again so he swims along with the hook. Just tucked up in there and he's ready to go down. over there. He wants to go that way. I don't want to get caught in the prop. Probably, yeah. I want to put a little more weight on yours. How do I look? 
ready. <laughs> One of a kind. Am I as green as you? One of a kind. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell. Yeah, he's staying down. Yeah, he's staying Instead straight of... down. He's not rolling, so he's got to have some weight to him. You want me to stick him? I don't know. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna throw it back or not. Yeah, I'll get a heartbeat. Yeah. Let me step all the way back so there's more room. He's pretty angry. I'm gonna have to hop on this guy, guy. He's a hop on guy! Hey, is that? Fish! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! We gotta go! We gotta go! And take the rod off the boat! Take that back one up. Snap that rock. Here we go, Tim. Have you seen it yet, Brian? Yeah, it's right here. Is that any good? Ah, it's decent. It's not huge, but I mean, we're gonna. Yep. Boom. Strong. Come in the boat with Well, hold on, hold on. So during our halibut trips, you know, we start up mid-May, starts getting really good then, so we fish May through Labor Day. And pretty much all year we get really nice fish. Right now we're mainly targeting halibut and rockfish. Our lingcod opens up July 1st, so on this trip we're looking at catching our black bass that we caught a lot of, and we catch a lot of nice looking halibut. Average halibut is about 20 pounds, but we catch a lot in the 40, 50 pound range and usually get some over 100 pounds each trip. We're fishing out of Valdez and we run two to three hours out, just depending on. It's a long run out to the Gulf, but it's usually worth it. It's where we catch most of our big fish. And we're going out there targeting really nice trophy halibut if we can. Um, the weather, you know, it's open ocean, so it can be a little bit swelly. Everyone always asks, will we get seasick? And it's hard to tell you. Some people do, some people don't. If you've never done it before, you won't know until you do it. So you might as well give it a try. Depending on the time of the year and depending on our tides, whether they're big tides or little tides, we'll go to different areas. Some areas aren't affected by the tide as much. When you get out into the open ocean, we don't see as much current compared to some of the entrances near the islands. So it just kind of depends on what the tide is doing. Sometimes an in incoming, we'll fish certain areas, outgoing, we'll fish different areas. We want to fish a shallow shelf where we're getting into deep water and all of our scents going down to where the halibut are sitting until they come up and feed. 
I love fishing out of Valdez for two reasons. One, I think we get really nice halibut. I mean, yes, average halibut is 20-ish pound, but a lot of times we're coming home with some 30s, 40s, 50s, and 100 pounders. And we're also targeting rockfish at the same time. Always, everyone always asks, do you do combo trips? Well, what is a combo trip? Everyone says, well, we want to catch halibut and something else. We pretty much always catch halibut and rockfish. And when lingcod opens, we catch lingcod. We're not just going out there for halibut, we're going out there for multi-species every trip. So in our halibut fishing, almost all season we use herring. And we use a lot of halibut nectar on our herring. It's really not rocket science. This stuff is the easiest thing to do. The longer you let it soak, almost the better. If you can get them thawed the night before and you throw it in there, not a problem. Some of these were in here today, so they're just kind of thawing. Some of them were from yesterday. This stuff just stays nice and hard with the ice in there with the other ones. And it's as simple as just opening a bottle. We don't even use the square top. We're just using the whole bottle every time. And you just give it a nice layer in there. I mean, that's why it's all nice and red. And it's gonna put that nice scent on there. It just adds more and more flavor to the herring. Just puts a nicer scent trail out there every time. Fishing out of Valdez is a lot of fun, and there's one of the nice things about it is the easy access. There's two flights a day in, or one of the most popular things is to come in on the road and RV in. You can drive from the lower 48 if you're on a huge trip, or you can rent an RV in Anchorage, come see a bunch of Alaska, come over here, do some fishing, and turn around and drive back to Anchorage and fly home. So it makes it really easy access. You're not dealing with a lot of little planes and a lot of travel inside of Alaska. You can get here and enjoy the fishing and you're enjoying Prince William Sound. I mean, every day that we head out, we go out two hours and people are like, wow, it's a long ways to go fishing. You're going through all of Prince William Sound. So we're seeing orcas and humpbacks and otters and sea lions along those two hours. It's not like you're just sitting doing nothing. You're getting a sightseeing tour in along with the fishing. 